Okay, so here we are at Cedar Song Nature School on Monday, what is today, October 10th? All right, so it's Native American Day in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And we're here with Erin Kenny. And Erin, yesterday was our uh, October board meeting, and you were just on fire talking about this international conference that yeah. you just came back from. So tell us a little well, bit about that. I did. I just got back from the International Conference on Early Childhood and Nature Education in the Netherlands and Germany. And I got a chance to visit some of the forest kindergartens there, also known as outdoor preschools in this country. And one of the things I was excited to see was that the children in these countries were allowed to challenge themselves a lot more than Americans are comfortable with. So in our country, we very much coddle our children and we don't allow them to challenge themselves. We're very risk averse. However, what has been found is that children need a certain amount of moderate risk in order to find out what their own capabilities are. And in fact, children who aren't exposed to moderate risk end up having more injuries than children who spend a lot of time outdoors and are allowed to climb and balance because they have the opportunity to understand what their own comfort zone is. So one of the things I heard the teacher say at one of these forest kindergartens in Germany is that we try to bring children outside of their comfort zone, yet not quite into their panic zone. So they're continually allowing the children to challenge themselves and push the boundaries of their own comfort zone. Here in America, uh, so many parents are very fearful about letting their children climb very high. And in my experience, when children are allowed to climb trees as far as they feel comfortable, they will increase the height to which they climb every time they feel a little more comfortable. So children will climb to great heights in trees. And in fact, one of the uh, women at the conference who's from Scotland said that she had observed a child, an eight-year-old girl, climbing very high in a tree. And some of the parents were looking at that child saying, oh my gosh, I'm so worried she's going to fall. And that child just looked at them and said, I will never fall from this tree. And it was really a lesson in the idea that as children feel comfortable, they really will only go as far as they feel comfortable. However, in America, parents and a lot of educators do not allow children to challenge themselves in that way. And some of it, I believe, is because we live in a culture that's driven by fear. We are so fearful of everything, and we're fearful of exposing children to natural risks in nature. And the other thing is that we live in such a litigious society that everybody's afraid that somebody's going to get sued if their child falls out of a tree. Well, when I was a kid, we climbed as high as we wanted to in trees, and there were no adults around supervising. And I would certainly not call my parents negligent. So it's not only a cultural thing, it's a generational thing. I think that most uh, people in America who were born before 1970 had the childhood experience of spending huge amounts of time out in nature unsupervised, this unstructured play out in nature. And children these days just absolutely don't get that opportunity. So I think that exposing children to moderate risk is an essential part of their childhood experience and that actually we contribute to children having a disability when they don't learn the proper way to climb and the proper way to fall. So when children start to challenge themselves, if they fall from a height that's not too severe, they learn the proper way to fall. They learn how to tuck and roll. And through time, they learn the proper ways to fall that will minimize injury. Children who are never exposed to moderate risk and who are kept indoors or kept from climbing, when they do end up falling from a height that could injure them, the injuries are actually more severe because they've never learned how to properly fall. And this was actually a big topic of discussion in Europe. Uh, 
And as I said, the forest kindergartens I visited in the Netherlands and Germany, the children were climbing a lot higher than we, even here at Cedar Song, feel comfortable with. We have a rule that children can only climb to twice their height. And that's a safety rule as much as a rule regarding liability. So I saw two and three-year-olds in this German forest kindergarten climbing 10 feet up in the air and the teachers were not even paying attention because they realized that those children hadn't just one day climbed to 10 feet. They had started at one foot and then two foot and then three foot and as they got more comfortable they would climb higher and as they understood their own abilities it was true they will never fall from those trees. So Erin as you're talking I'm it's making me think about our immune systems and how people who are not exposed to any kind of uh, germs, bacteria, viruses, their immune systems need that exposure in order to develop. And it sounds like, in a sense, you're talking about uh, something very similar. Yeah, that's, that's really a good analogy. And uh, bringing in the whole strengthening the, the immune system is another uh, observation that I made at these European forest kindergartens. They were much less concerned with hand sanitation and cleanliness that we are here in America. Uh, we tend to be very germaphobe and antibacterial, uh, this and that, here in the U.S. And in Europe, what they believe is that you really need to have exposure to germs in order to strengthen your immune system. Um, one of the things that's also been found is simply being outdoors tends to stimulate and strengthen humans' immune systems. And the science is not really clear on why that would be. However, it is well documented. The other thing is that so many American parents are still under this erroneous assumption that their children are gonna get sick by being out in cold and wet weather. That's absolutely not true. Children get sick from exposure to germs, and they're going to be exposed to a lot more germs in an indoor setting than they are ever going to be outdoors. So we actually find in our outdoor model in the forest kindergarten that the children get sick much less often than in the indoor preschools. Wow. Yeah. Hey, tell us a little bit about just the uh, conference in general. How many countries, what countries... Is this an annual thing? There were 30 participants at this international conference and eight countries were represented. All of the participants in some way or another worked with young children uh, and connecting them with nature. All of us felt a, a very strong passion about the critical importance of connecting young children with nature. Uh, the conference was organized by the Nature Action Collaborative for Children, which is an international organization uh, spearheaded by the World Forum Foundation, which is actually headquartered in Seattle. Uh, it was really fascinating to be able to observe uh, these other forest kindergarten models. However, it was also equally as interesting to me to have discussion amongst all of these educators and practitioners who are in the field connecting young children with nature about why we feel that it's important and what the challenges are uh, for us in the field and as far as sort of convincing the rest of the world that this is really important work that we're doing. So can you, uh, in one long out breath say why this work is important. I feel really strongly that all humans need to connect with the natural world. We are part of the natural world. It is our birthright to feel the grass between our toes and to feel the breeze in our hair. Uh, I know it may sound cliche, but this is something that we are losing in our culture. There are a lot of children today who have no direct connection with the natural world. and. It has been shown that unless people have that direct connection with the natural world, they will not develop a compassion and an intuitive empathy for all the rest of the living beings. If you're not personally connected to the natural world, it allows you to objectify it and abuse it. And that is something that unfortunately in our culture is becoming more prevalent because of our disconnection from the natural world. And then would you say that people fear nature? 
Yes, absolutely. I believe that Americans, American parents fear nature and they fear sending their children out in nature and this fear is absolutely irrational. As I said, when I was a child, I spent huge amounts of time outdoors, unsupervised. We climbed trees, we ran, we balanced, we were barefoot, and we may have had a few cuts and scrapes along the way, but it was all part of the delight in immersing ourselves in nature. There was no end to the natural objects that could stimulate our creativity and our imagination. So was that similar for people in other, the other uh, countries who were gathered at this conference? Did they find similar things that, that over the last uh, two, three, four, five decades there's been a distancing? Yes, I definitely agree that it seems to be a generational thing. Uh, it seems that in the last 30 or 40 years is what um, when we have noticed this uh, really diminished amount of time that children are spending in immersed in nature. However, I do also notice uh, that it tends to be a cultural thing as well because what I observed in Germany is that the parents wholeheartedly embrace these forest kindergartens and these outdoor preschools as an early, a valid early childhood education model. There are literally hundreds of these forest kindergartens in Germany and there's long waiting lists for all of them. Um, I think that in America we live in a very indoor culture so there is no priority put on getting outdoor time and the young parents are not modeling that getting your outdoor time is a priority so these children are not being encouraged to play outside nor are their parents demonstrating that it is important to spend time outdoors. I think that's a big cultural difference uh, between America and the countries that I visited in Europe. Fabulous. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.